Hello my dear doctors, now let us discuss about the sign of Erb's paralysis. As you all know, Erb's paralysis will occur due to injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus. An upper trunk of the brachial plexus is formed from C5 and C6. So C5 and C6 will combine to form upper trunk and if that is injured, it is nothing but Erb's paralysis. Now, how will it occur? Basically, how will Erb's paralysis occur? Remember, it is due to actually overstretch between the head and the shoulder. If there is an overstretch between the head and the shoulder, then upper trunk will be damaged. And it usually happens during birth injuries and even when a person falls on a shoulder. Fine, but how will you identify that in the clinical condition? If this patient comes to you in a hospital, then how will you identify this one? Let me show you today practically here. So when the upper trunk is damaged, that is in earth paralysis, the main nerves which are involved, number one will be the axillary nerve. Number two will be the suprascapular nerve and another one will be the musculocutaneous nerve guys. So there are three nerves involved, I repeat again, axillary nerve and another one is the suprascapular nerve and the musculocutaneous nerve. First you try to understand the normal thing, then automatically you can apply that to see what will be the abnormality occurring here guys. Okay, and in this earth paralysis we need to see the changes which are taking place at the shoulder and then at the elbow and then at the forearm. Let's see in the sequence guys. Okay, first the normal, then the abnormal. Suprascapular nerve will be actually supplying to supraspinatus muscle here. And the supraspinatus muscle is actually helping in 0 to 15 degrees abduction. That means it is actually helping in initiating the abduction of the arm. Axillary nerve is the one which is actually supplying to deltoid muscle. And deltoid muscle is actually helping in 15 to 90 degrees abduction of the arm. So overall, what's happening here? The supraspinatus muscle, and the deltoid muscle, these two muscles together are actually helping in abduction of the arm. Now in Erb's paralysis, these two nerves are gone. That is your suprascapular nerve as well as axillary nerve, these two are gone. That is the reason why the person is unable to do abduction of the arm. That's why arm will be adducted. Arm will be in adducted position, guys. And then axillary nerve is not only supplying the deltoid muscle, it is also supplying to teres minor muscle. And teres minor muscle will be actually helping in external rotation here. Okay, lateral rotation or external rotation. So if that is gone, automatically it will be in medial rotator, medially rotated position, guys. So therefore, what is the final conclusion here? What's happening at the arm in earth paralysis? Yes, the arm will be adducted and medially rotated. The next thing. The next nerve which is involved in earth paralysis is musculocutaneous nerve. And we all know from our golden rule, musculocutaneous nerve will be supplying to all the muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm. Now here you have got your biceps muscle and this biceps muscle and brachialis muscle, they are actually helping in flexion at the elbow joint. Now if musculocutaneous nerve is gone, these muscles are paralyzed, then what will happen at the elbow? Elbow cannot be flexed, it will be in extended position. It makes sense now, right? Not only that, the biceps muscle is actually not only helping in flexion of the elbow, it's a very, very good supinator. It's a very strong supinator here at the elbow joint. So therefore, what is happening here, guys? When this biceps muscle is gone, therefore, the forearm cannot be supinated. It will be in the pronated position here. Okay. So overall, let me now summarize how will be the appearance of the upper limb here, guys. Okay. So arm, arm will be actually in adducted position as well as medially rotated. Elbow will be extended and then the forearm will be pronated and these fingers are flexed like this. So this is how the upper limb appears in earth paralysis. So that's how the patient is going to come to you in the hospital tomorrow. Understanding? So if I show you in this manner, it appears like a tip hand as if the policeman is asking for a tip here. So that's the reason why it is known as the policeman tip hand or else it is also known as the waiter's tip hand or else it is also known as the porter's tip hand guys. Okay, that's the complete sign of the earth paralysis. So as I always tell in my classes, guys, don't just listen, learn along with me. So you also do it practically along with me and it becomes easy without mugging up the entire thing, guys. That's all about the sign of earth paralysis. Hope you understood that. Thank you.